4.5 billion years ago. Earth in its infancy was an environment hostile to life. The atmosphere was over 80 degrees Celsius and devoid of any oxygen. But after millions of years, a miracle occurred. The first living organisms appeared on the Earth, birthed by the ocean. Three point five billion years ago, the ocean was rich with oxygen, and the horizon glowed with the sapphire hue of the water. It was at this time that stromatolite, the first form of life, appeared. This primitive organism was in fact colonies of blue-green algae, which survived through photosynthesis and produced abundant amounts of oxygen. Thanks to this organism, Earth's atmosphere became oxygen-rich, creating an environment that was conducive to life. Five hundred million years ago. The seas began to teem with an endless variety of strange-looking creatures. They possessed long tentacles and fearsome spines and were protected by stone-hard armor. This sudden proliferation of life is called the Cambrian Explosion of Life. Scientists believe that the ancestors of most of the animals in existence today appeared at this time. This creature swimming through the water using its wing-like appendages is Anomalocaris. Over a meter long, this animal was the largest and most fearsome predator of the Cambrian oceans. It could pierce through the hard armor of a trilobite with a single bite. Competition for survival grew fierce, and creatures were forced to modify themselves to survive. During this time, a transformation occurred, altering the course of evolutionary history. It was the tiny pacaya, a creature no larger than a thumb, which was the constant target of larger predators. When we look at pacaya, we are really stepping into the door of vertebrate evolution. We are there, as we say in English, on the ground floor. These are the opening moments of this extraordinary story, which is going to take another half a billion years. The pacaya developed a stiff rod on its back called a notochord. It was the precursor of the spine. But when we look closely, we actually see that there are quite a lot of details. We can see the front end and we can see the tail. And then, most interesting, roughly along here, there is a distinctly different zone. The notochord proved to be a revolutionary improvement. The notochord and the V-shaped muscles around it, called myomeres, worked in concert to propel this creature forward, giving it unprecedented speed and power. This is how Pikaia probably looked as it swam. Its propulsion method is similar to that of modern fish. Despite being an apex predator, Anomalocaris soon became extinct. But Pikaia managed to survive. While it was armed with neither eyes nor a protective shell, it could elude even the fiercest of predators using its superior speed. Pikaia's legacy is significant in the history of evolution. Once you've got a notochord, once you've got the myomeres, then you're on the way to becoming a fish. Once you're on the way to becoming a fish, you're on the way to becoming an invertebrate, 
And once you are on the way to becoming a vertebrate, then you're on the way to becoming us. Had the Pacaya become extinct, the history of life on Earth would have ended 500 million years ago in the sea. Instead, these tiny protovertebrates were slowly preparing to become fish.